you know, if you build brand, you can sell anything you want. Um, but part of building brand is not trying to sell, which is the kind of the oxymoron of the whole thing. If your objective is to sell a bunch of stuff, you've already failed. This was easily one of my favorite conversations I've had on the podcast. I learned a ton from this interview with Jeff Mao. As you will hear, Jeff is the founder of Tenacore, which is a design, development, and manufacturing company, primarily focused on concealed carry products. Jeff holds the value of a brand in high esteem, and he has a lot of great insight on how to build a strong one. Welcome to Work is Good, a CSM podcast where we aim to help people enjoy and excel at their work. We typically publish two episodes each week. The first is a conversation more directly tied to the title and thesis of our show. The second episode of the week features a conversation about branding and marketing. We also try to fit in a quick conversation about mortgage and real estate. My name is Landon Buto, and I host this show with my dad, Chris Buto, the owner and president at CSM. Please enjoy this episode. My name is Jeff Mao. I am the founder of Tenacore. Um, Tenacore is a design development manufacturing company, primarily with concealment products. Uh, our primary products are holsters, mag pouches, and belts. Um, we do everything in house. Um, it started with with it starts with an idea in our heads about what we think or how we think a product should work, um, and then we do all of the design and development and testing and everything in house. And we manufacture it ourselves and we um, sell it ourselves. So we, um, in one sense, we are different than many people in our current age where people will focus on one aspect. There'll be a marketing company or there'll be mm-hmm. you know, some, some particular service provider or they'll just be the retailer or they'll just be one aspect of things. And we try to, we do everything. So, yeah. um, which is an You're not just producing challenge and a fun challenge. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when did you guys start? What's the timeline been? Uh, so we, um, started working on designing projects for, or products for a long, long time, probably took us 10 plus years to bring our first product to market. Um, and a lot of that was just cause it was a side thing and different levels of seriousness at different times, 2017. So, um, almost six years ago is when we first launched our product on the website and we are as far as sales go we're a direct consumer primarily um most of our sales are either through our website to the consumer or they are through some other channel we have a fair amount of government sales so we'll we use distributors uh and kind of middlemen for on the government side but for, for most gotcha. of the commercial side at least we're a direct consumer gotcha great i'm curious um you you mentioned you know you start it starts with an idea in your head and then you just kind of take it from there what it what does that process look like specifically is it just uh, as you're going as you're going along something comes up and you discuss it and then like let's let's try this let's execute on it or is there a specific we set meetings for idea creation or what does that look like um no usually it's a um i mean the start with is you know, we make holsters and there weren't holsters that functioned how we thought they should function. So there weren't holsters that concealed as well as they we thought they should conceal. Um, and then when pressure tested and training, there weren't holsters that held up how we felt like they should hold up. Hold up. And so mm-hmm. mostly it's out of at least from our perspective, a need. And so and then now that we have products, any design features or changes is, are have to do with either the manufacturing process and making it. Uh, more efficient and more productive to produce it or it is a design feature like functionally we think you know we can add this particular feature we can get it to cant and uh, you know we can get it to rotate cant and adjust in height and so we change either the attachment or we change something about the holster so that we can get better or more height adjustment Hmm. yeah that's neat. I enjoy seeing the the end product of seeing what the specific innovation is, um, but it's, it's cool to hear a little bit about the process behind that. Um, so yeah, so, turning yeah, to turn branding, branding specifically, do well, can you get into a little bit what what role branding has played in your company, both in terms of just how you guys think about it, how you think about brand, the 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 way you describe it, the way you think about it. And then um, what role it's actually played, your focus on it or uh, whatever your approach is 
has played in leading to where you guys are today? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't think there is anything that is more important than brand, really, for any company. Um, so brand is, you know, your reputation as a company. It's how people perceive you. It's how people think about your product and think about your service. It is everything. Um, and ultimately, if you have strong brand, you can sell you know, people are going to trust you. They're going to identify you with you. They're going to be, they're going to want to use your product or use your service um, because they believe in it. And you then have the, like you, it's a leverage point, right? It's a leverage point and you can use that then to really sell any product or service that you want. Um, mm -hmm. And I say it's a leverage point, but it's a leverage point only because you build brand by giving. Right. So if I do enough for somebody else, um, if I'm constantly giving, if I, whether it's by providing information that makes them better, by making them laugh, by making them feel good, by sending them a gift or sending them, you know, whatever the thing is, is building a relationship. And if the other party feels like I'm there to help them and to support them and that the things that I'm doing make them better, then at that, that is the, um, you know, it's only a leverage point because I've gone and given so much. Um, and I think that's how you build brand, right? You build brand, yeah. building brand, you know, prior to the internet, it was going to, you know, cold calling on somebody and going in and shaking somebody's hand and taking them out to lunch um, and finding it. And not just, not just for the purposes of, hey, can I sell you this thing? But for the purposes of, hey, I actually care about you. What are the challenges that you're having in your business? Oh, you know, maybe I sell whatever, but I, you you express that you have this issue with this other problem, and I either know have expertise in that area that I can help you, um, or I have, um, or I know somebody and I can connect you with somebody. Right? Those are ways that you build relationships with people. Um, and we live in a world today where we have the internet, we have all sorts of platforms that we can not just. We don't have, can't just we don't just have to like call someone on the phone or knock on their door. I can post something on the internet on LinkedIn or on Instagram or whatever, um, and maybe you know I can reach maybe five people if I don't have a very big audience, but that's better than one. Um, but if I put the work in and I build a big enough audience, I can reach a hundred, or I can reach a thousand, or I can reach ten thousand, or I can reach a million potentially. Um, and I do that, and I build and I do, I'm building a re relationship, you know leveraging the internet just as a tool so that I can figure out how to bless people. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, if you have a strong brand, you can sell anything. Um, in your mind, what, what makes a strong brand? Is it the, the breadth of your brand or the quality of it or a combination? Uh, so it has to be something like the product you use and the idea or the product you make or the product you sell and the, kind of the ethos behind it has to be something that people are interested in. It doesn't have to be a ton of people, it just has to be enough people, right? Mm -hmm. So like Nike has strong brand, like everybody knows what they're gonna get, right? Um, and in, in, to some people, it's a negative brand, but it's still a strong brand, right? Mm -hmm. um, same mm -hmm. thing, you know, like, you know, big companies, Apple, Microsoft, whoever, we all, like they have communicated effectively who they There's are. There's a one-to-one. Yeah. And we know who they are. Even if it's a old, stale, useless brand, it's still they still it's it's just reputation, right? Right. Um and so that, you know, you're just trying to communicate with the world who you are. Yeah, um, so consistency has, seems key there. For sure. It has and it has less to do with you're like you're not trying to describe features and benefits. Communicating right. with people describing features and benefits is not something that builds brand. Hmm. That is just a thing that is super uninterested. Nobody cares about. Yeah. Uh, and showing like who you are and what, like who, like what do you believe in? That is interesting to people. Yeah. And that's kind of yeah. what you want to communicate. Yeah. 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 Uh, I. I mean, so what? What? How does that line up with a, You know, any given recent post from you guys from Tenacore describing a specific product of yours you know is there is there a place for that in there where you are describing the uh, features and benefits of your product there is but we actually well, oftentimes well um 
like you got to remind people what you're doing. But right. I look, if I post a picture of a holster um, and I talk about this is what that holster does, I am I am less I'm reminding you of, hey, yeah, we also do. We also sell stuff. And yeah. If you're interested, sure. you can buy. It. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really build brand like that. Yeah. All it was was pictures of holsters. That's not building brand. Um, but the fact that we do training also and that we would mm-hmm. post something, we would talk about um, like concealment and how to conceal your gun better and why this belt or that belt would work better for this type of holster um, and these types of features. And we're trying to help people in that process of concealing a gun or carrying a gun. Um, that's the kind of thing that is going to build brand. And you're going to speak about it. It's not just the fact that you show how to do those things, but it's also how you talk about it. Like there's lots of people could talk about it. Like you could talk about holsters, right? Um, but it probably wouldn't be super interesting because you're not into right. holsters and you don't design yeah. holsters, you don't make holsters and you haven't spent decades figuring it out. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, so Landon Buteau videos on holsters probably wouldn't do very well. Hey, maybe I'll give it a shot. <laughs> um, but there's other things like if Landon Buteau want to talk about soccer and coaching soccer and helping youth with soccer, they'd probably be pretty interesting videos. Right. Right. And interesting content that people would be interested in looking at. And it may, and in the beginning it wouldn't be millions of people or tens of thousands, right. of people, but it'd be somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's helpful. Um, and then, but uh, I want to get, a, get into um, what you guys are doing specifically um, and, and on the practical level, but real, mm-hmm. real quick, curious where, how how this mindset has developed? Where have you um, gotten your philosophy on branding over the years? Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. So that cool. would be where. So like, um, pretty much, I, I would yeah. say he is a and he's an interesting character that is some people really like, some people don't. Um, I think he is just a speaker of truth. Um, and some people just don't like to hear the things he has to say because it exposes them. Um, but you know, I mean, he speaks to that's this where, issue brand very consumed. clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And for sure. Brand is what it's all about. And that brand, you know, if you build brand, you can sell anything you want. Um, but part of building brand is not trying to sell which is the kind of the oxymoron of the whole thing. Right. Like you, if your objective is to sell a bunch of stuff, you've already failed. Mm. Your objective needs to be to how to give to other people and how to bless them. Right. Right. And that's where it starts. And in the end, like what people want, um, people want metrics. And so most metrics that are out there and available are very sales oriented. Uh, And they are short term metrics. And Mm -hmm. ultimately, building brand is a religious conviction that you need to have. And if you don't have that strong conviction to just continue to build brand and forget about sales and forget about short term metrics, then you're always going to be distracted and you're going to go a different direction and you're going to compromise what you believe in for short term -term -term game benefit like you because you because you may believe you're going to get 10 percent growth this month if i do these things well you might get that but what you're not going to get is you know 500 percent growth over the next 10 years right and so you have to be willing to play the long game and invest in people and invest in processes and invest in what you're doing um knowing that it takes a while to pay off but once it does and you're consistent with it, it's going to work out. Or the market's going to say you suck, right? I mean, that'd, that'd be the other option. Yeah, um, yeah. The other option is maybe you're actually really bad at what you're trying to do. And then the market's and you've gonna, really gotten yourself out there. Yeah. But you got to be decent yeah. and put your time in to figure that out. You don't yeah. figure that out in yeah. days or weeks or months. Yeah, yeah that, that is, yeah, that's, that's a challenge for sure. And figuring out, um, you know, when, when is it the market telling you to change what you're doing and when is it patience, you know? Yeah. Um, um, I, 
Uh, I do want to hear your thoughts. I, I had a recent conversation, um, a recent call, another one of these, and we were talking specifically about the difference between a personal brand and a company brand. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm curious what what your approach to building Tanacore's brand has been. Is it, where does it start? You know, if you're building your personal brand, in a sense, you've got everything created already. When you're building your company brand, do you focus on uh, on starting with who we are and, and spend a lot of time defining that and then go out and just, you know, let that be known in whatever platforms are available? Or what's your process been on that? Yeah, those are good questions. I think um, one, sometimes people can talk about wanting to like separate things out and it becomes an academic discussion for the sake of procrastinating and not doing something. Um, sure. So we want to be careful from the get go that that's not what we're doing, that we're not like trying to be nuancy just so we can say, well, I'm trying to do this company brand thing over here and that's why i haven't really started right so for yeah. sure that is a lot of people's temptation um, and they want to rationalize their insecurity and their fear um so don't do that would be number one yeah yep. um after that uh so, well i guess similarly i think it doesn't matter that much so just go do something your personal brand if someone's particularly if someone's just starting out, whether it is their company brand or their personal brand, they don't really know what that is. Like right. they don't know what their brand is really, because they, they don't. They probably haven't done enough that they really know who they are yet. If that makes sense, right? And so part of it yeah. is you need to just go do stuff, doing the things and talking about who you are, talking about what you believe, talking about your product is going to be the sanctifying process that opens your eyes to who you are and what you actually believe. And so six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, you are going to have a much more mature perspective on who you are and who your company is. Um, and I don't think there's, a, there's not a, oh, it's too late to separate my personal brand from my company brand. And so just go do stuff would be is kind of the moral of the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. That being said, I think, I mean, you can make a distinction, but ultimately, so like Tenacore, you know, I'm the one that started the company. I mean, at this right. point, you know, we're still a small company. We got like 27 people. Um, we've grown a lot. Um, I'm not the only one that communicates on behalf of the company anymore, though. But the company is very much my me and my personality. Right. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So someone on the outside may not know that, but internally, I think everybody knows that. Yeah. And that's been some of the sanctifying process, or particularly over the last six to 12 months, is understanding that the look and the feel and the perspective is Jeff Mao and Tenacore. The two are the same. Um, and now as the company matures, let's put processes in place to be able to, um, be consistent in that voice, even if it's not me talking. And that's just like a maturing sanctifying thing for mm-hmm. us as a company. And that is me, um, understanding that and then documenting who, who are we, making sure that I'm talking to the people internally about who we are and how we communicate with people so that they then can be consistent in that. Um, And then at some point, you know, do we, you know, if I have the Jeff Mao brand versus the Tentacore brand, I mean, you can always over a period, like say it was just Jeff's holsters. Um, you know, could we spin it into something else? We probably could. I guess uh, to some extent that was, I mean, that's the reason why it's not Jeff's custom holsters because I recognize in the beginning, I didn't want it to be that. So that's why the, we have a name Tenacore, which is different than anything else in the industry, which is a generic because I believed in brand. I, I wanted to be able to sell like training product service. I wanted to be able to sell all kinds of different things potentially. Mm. 
I didn't want to be restricted. And so that's why it wasn't just that one thing. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, Cleveland Street Mortgage. Well, um, you'd have to, if you wanted to do something outside the mortgage space, you'd have to rebrand into Cleveland Street, right? right. Or some other right. name. Yep. Um, which yeah. Which is a thing to yeah, consider. I, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we are generally working towards CSM as just mo- mostly for the purposes of concision and mem- memor- memorability. Um, just CSM. Um, but I think that's that's valuable point there is you know do you have a long-term perspective and how does that impact your decision um yeah i think i mean the question comes from a i guess what what are we trying what are we trying to communicate but i think you know like you're saying it's do stuff that that is you um that that aligns with what you're doing and aligns with who you are and then just communicate it um uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on. Um, I want to hear how, how this connects to your trainings and and uh, what uh, other services besides just holsters that you're providing right now. But the the question I want to ask specifically is um, what what are the most noteworthy things that have helped you create your reputation or your brand as it is? Um, and that could be things that you have focused on def- defining who Tenacore is or things that you focused on in terms of making known who you are. Um, and you, you hinted at, um, or you, you, you talked about the trainings and I'm curious if those were solely, you know, we, we want to do these, that they're good to do, but they're, they're mostly just an expansion of who we are so that we can sell our holsters for now, or how, how does that tie in? Yeah. So we, um, it- you know, if you would have asked me 15 years ago what I so I was a police officer for many years. If you would have asked me what I'm going to do when I'm done being a cop, I would have said training. Um, so there's a natural connection. It's like that's really one of my passions and what I love doing. Yeah. Um, sharing how to do things and how to make people better with that. And so there's a natural connection there. Um, but then that's an, that's a thing that is interesting and cool to people within this industry, right? It's within the shooting, um, and tactical industry. And so there's a natural connection there. So I can leverage as something I enjoy. It is something that can make people better. Um, and so we can provide training. We can talk about training. We can video it. We can put training videos up and people can look at it and they'll appreciate that. So, um, that, and then that like that is part of who we are that is our the genesis of like the reason why we think products we need to make products is because we do things right so we have a thing talk about the prior survival of mindset tactics skill and equipment equipment is at the bottom of that we sell equipment that's how we make money but really the equipment is driven by our mindset our tactics and our skills so if we have the ability to talk about our tactics and skills and do that in an intelligent way that people can learn from that's going to better communicate with people who we are and what we care about um Mm. and so i think that's important for building brand right you want to to show people who you are so like if i was a if i was a real estate agent i would want to share with people about who who that who i am and what i do and why and i'm probably going to sell houses that i'm going to sell houses to people that are similar to me so when i talk if i go hunting and yeah. I talked about that, like, you know, if I was a real estate agent, I would try to build personal brand and I wouldn't try to build a company brand. And I would want people to think that I'm cool. And the same thing, if I was a, a mortgage broker, again, mm-hmm. I would probably, unless I was looking to build and franchise something out, I would try to build a personal brand and I want people to know who I am and what I do. And I, you know, right. I have a background in these areas and, you know, I, I like baking cookies or I like going hunting or I like doing whatever. And people are probably going to identify with those things and they're going to want to like use me for to help buy their house. Right. Right. Yeah. I think that's the tension. And, you know, we're coming back to that division again, which I, that, I don't want to make that the focus, but I, it's something I've thought a lot about 
as in my role in marketing for Cleveland Street and then in my role as a loan officer, um, I'm a mortgage broker, um, <clears throat> is, you know, what am I losing something for Cleveland Street if I put my energy as a marketing director into marketing our our specific individual loan officers and building their personal brand um, versus building the brand name of CSM. Um, and I think you're right. It, you have to think about what your end goals are. You're looking to build the yeah. company. Are you looking to, you know, franchise? Uh, and um, so I think that's, that's come to the surface is what do we actually want to uh, do? I think Cleveland Street Mortgage is going to be a company that's here for decades and there's going to be, 20 to 50 loan officers working there, then you would want to talk about Cleveland Street Mortgage and how you're going to accomplish that and what that looks like. But if Cleveland Street Mortgage is Chris Buteau and Landon Buteau and maybe one or two other people, and maybe those people cycle through, right? Um, right. Then you want to talk about who Chris is and why I would want to trust Chris with buying a $600,000 house, right? Right. You'd want yeah, to build. Yeah, I think that's super and helpful. That. Yeah. And same thing, like even if like if I decided I'm going to come to work for Cleveland Street Mortgage, I'm going to be one of your loan officers. Um, really, you want to pour into me as that loan officer. Right. You want to right. leverage. You want me to want to come to work for your Cleveland Street Mortgage and not somebody else. Um, and right. you want to be able to show to me how the marketing team at Cleveland Street Mortgage is going to pour resources into me and build the brand of Jeff Mao and show not just what is the short term. Um, you know, it's not just short term metrics of did he originate enough loans this month to pay the bill, but do we have a long term perspective in Jeff Mao's ability to or build relationships and originate loans over years that is going to ultimately build wealth for him and then also build wealth for the company? And at some point, I may, you know, maybe I'm this awesome loan officer three years from now and I spin off and I do my own thing. But ultimately, mm -hmm. that, build, that builds the reputation of Cleveland Street. Um, yeah. And then there's someone else who comes in behind. And then it's like you guys have not only the loan infrastructure to support a bunch of loan officers, but you also have this marketing component that can build brand and it brings value. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, hopefully, even if I am doing all this stuff on my own, there's enough <clears throat> value in being associated with the brand of Cleveland Street Mortgage and the, um, you know, the infrastructure that like Landon Buteau brings to me as helping with my marketing efforts. Um, and just the reputation that Cleveland Street has that I wouldn't want to go off on my own. Right. right. Yeah. And I think that's that's kind of the direction we have in mind right now is bring value to our loan officers by supporting their personal brand and then also bring value to them and others by building building our company brand. And uh, then that's it's it's two two fold effect there for loan officers that can come and yep, benefit from both great. of those things for us. And if you, I think that's the right perspective because if you have the perspective of <clears throat> always, how does this benefit Cleveland Street? How does this benefit Cleveland Street? You, you just lost. Right. 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 Yeah. Like you started. Yep. Like the end game is that it's not going to work. You've already failed. Yep. But you have to start from the perspective of is how is this going to benefit my audience and how is this going to benefit the other people on our team and how does right. it ben ultimately benefit the potential customers we're going to because it is yeah. that long a religious conviction about brand and believing in brand that does not have to do with short-term sales for you guys as as a loan you know as a mortgage company you have it's very easy to track those short-term metrics and you want to look right. at that the individual loan officer probably should and you know because you should right. be tracking because if you don't yeah, have money a place for that. Yeah. Work. but from yeah. a brand yeah. marketing perspective it's about building brand which is a long-term play which is all about blessing people which is all about giving and has nothing to do with receiving and that's you know yeah. gary vaynerchuk awesome. talks about 51 percent that in every relationship you have with somebody you should always be looking for them to have at least 51% value. Hmm. And if you, because if yeah. you are always the person that's looking for 51% value or more, then you're always the guy who is 
taking advantage of other people. Right. Right. He taught, and I forget yeah. this guy's name, but there's like this one Chinese business guy who never does a deal where he has more than 49%. And people, and that the question put to him, well, why do you do that? And he's like, well, if I have 80% ownership or whatever control in this deal, that's great for that deal, but those people are not going to want to do business with me again. But if I'm always the guy who has 49%, it's not just about this one deal. Everybody always wants to do business with him because they know they're always going to get more. And he's yeah. able to make money and scale because he's got hundreds, if not thousands of people that want to do business with him all the time. Yeah. Because does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I mean, really, really good stuff. Perspective. Yeah. You have to let other yeah. people get, you have to let other people get more. And so like mm -hmm. I, on the one hand, that sounds crazy, but I, you know, I sell a holster for 120 bucks. I actually believe that they're getting the benefit. Mm. I think my holsters are worth more than what they're paying. I think the value add to somebody's life, if they choose to come to Tenacor, they choose to interact with our training and uh, the things we say about how to think about personal safety and how to think about equipment, and then you buy our product, that customer is getting way more value than what they're paying for. And I believe that. And other yeah. people believe that. And they might not yeah, agree yeah, with yeah. It. And that's fine. But that's what I believe. Yeah. And so I'm perfectly yeah. happy to keep doing what we're doing and keep selling our product and maybe even raise our price at some point mm. because yeah. I think they're getting more value overall than we are. Right. Yeah, it's great. Um, have you read... Uh... Jab, 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 right hook. Mm -hmm. is, it, yeah. is it a good read? Is it more than than what you get on Instagram and Spotify um, every day, or is it the same? So he, I mean, Gary basically says the same stuff all the time. Yeah, over Everywhere. and over yep. again. Um, yep. And the reason he writes a book is because some people are book readers, right. and they don't like yeah. YouTube, or they don't so like if you consume it. Yep. Yeah. So. If that's how you consume stuff, then read the book. If yeah. you like listening to podcasts, then listen to the podcasts. If you like yep. scrolling through your feed and Instagram, then consume it there. Um, yeah. Similar. Just, yep. Same idea. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I'll, uh, super, super valuable, kind of high level stuff. I want to get at least one real practical, like specific, real practical thing. And this could go back to your training. It could go back to a specific platform you're pursuing right now. Um, what, what is, is now or next for you guys in terms of, um, real practical specific things you're excited about is it a, um, a specific platform or a new service you're providing in, in building your brand and reputation? Uh, so when it comes to, like I talked about religious conviction about brand building, like you just need to have yeah. that. It's not, um, it's not cool and it's not sexy. Um, it is just what you need to have. It's like kind of like, and then you need to be consistent with it. So it's kind of like reading your Bible. You just yeah. kind of have to do that every day and you do a little bit. And it may not seem fun. It's certainly not sexy, but it's the thing you need to do to get better. And so if you want to build brand, you just need to be consistent at it. Um, yeah. And I would say the change that we have made recently is trying to document things and be more consistent and have a plan where these are the minimum things we're going to do every single day. And then we're going to track those things to ensure that we execute those. So we have a thing where it's like, we're going to make X number of posts on Instagram and Facebook on the feed, on stories, on whatever, on a daily basis. And we have a calendar that we track that out. And it's like, we've done these things. And then we have next steps of, we're going to make X number of YouTube, you know, once we are doing that consistently, we're going to do the next thing. We're going to make X amount of YouTube videos per week, and then we're going to make X amount of blog posts per week. And we're going to just slowly, methodically plot away at executing the brand build in a really uninteresting, methodical way because we have a multi- decade perspective on how on where Tenacore is going to go and what we're going to do and we know we need to lay a foundation awesome great well jeff uh super super valuable and um this was 
really refreshing for me. Not not um, nothing that was cliche in here. Everything had a fr- fresh perspective. So really helpful for me. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for me. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Work Is Good. If you enjoyed it, share it, leave a review, and listen next week.